Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this particular examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are still in chapter 4 of set C and shall be looking forward to the remaining questions uh, related to Agile which we cover in chapter 4 and uh, that's where we'll be done with chapter 5 and then we will look forward to, sorry, chapter 4 and then we'll look forward to chapter 5 questions and then 6 and finally moving on to the next uh, set that is set D. So the next question we have for you today is question number 27. Question number 27 says, uh, which of the following is... Uh, uh, provides the best example of a scenario oriented acceptance criterion scenario oriented acceptance criterion uh, if you remember acceptance criteria we discussed that there are two different ways to write them one is scenario oriented and second is rule oriented scenario oriented means given when then and rule oriented means you can write it in bullet form or numbered list or you can write it in input output format right so these are the two things what we had as an option to write acceptance criteria defined in the syllabus. And uh, I think given that we just discussed it, it makes our job much simpler. But this is what you should have the capability during the examination to recall uh, in order to pick up the right answers. Many of us do this very silly mistake. We start reading the options because we don't have the context with us and try to dig the answer from the options. Never do that. Always try to bring back your knowledge what you remember if you don't remember, trust me, you can go wrong very easily. Okay, so having the knowledge can only save you by, uh, you know, getting the wrong answer. So get the knowledge, right? So let's look at the options now, given that we know the context and some of the discussion, what we just had. Option A says the application must allow users to delete their account and all associated data upon request. Okay, why not? Could be great. To have it as one of your acceptance criterion but the point is this is not the ask us right the ask is about scenario oriented way or pattern or format of writing acceptance criteria and this is not the way you write it right option b says when a customer adds an item to their cart and proceeds to check out they should be prompted to log in or create an account if they haven't already done so Okay, that makes a little more sense because uh, this is like a scenario where it's talking about a prerequisite, what kind of steps are being performed, and then what exactly should happen. Please mind the word that sometimes this question is not asked to check the easiness of the syllabus. It is more of asking you, did you understand what does given when then represents in this particular format? Given is more of like prerequisite, when is when the user performs something, then what should happen? right so it's not necessary that if you're using the keywords precisely but if you're following that pattern which fulfills these three important elements of writing acceptance criteria that makes a lot of sense but let's check the remaining two options before we conclude option c says uh, if contain product 23.name. Uh, comma card product then return false see this is just a trap because if and then are being used so that you start thinking about it. This is more of like a code. It's not a bad acceptance criteria. And code is not a pattern which we use for writing acceptance criteria. On top of it, the question is clearly telling you that we want to know what is scenario based format of writing acceptance criteria. So makes it totally wrong. Option D. Option D says uh, the website must comply with ICT accessibility 508 standards and ensure that all content is accessible to users with disability fantastic that's great but that's an accessibility requirement could be a great user story or could be an acceptance criteria but it's not written in the format what you are asking me right so all of these options are correct in their own sense but not with the question being asked to you so this is one of these those perfect example which could drill you down that how exactly i would feel that all the four options are looking correct the only answer where you went wrong or only concept where you went wrong is you don't remember where what is scenario uh, oriented rule of writing it right the format of writing it so i think that makes my job clearer to make you understand what i wanted to and the right answer for this particular question is b 
That is when a customer adds an item to their cart and proceeds to checkout, they should be prompted to log in or create an account if they haven't already done so. And that is the format what we need to follow when we talk about scenario oriented uh, format of writing acceptance criteria. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next question we have is question number 28. Uh, the last question from the chapter four. Uh, you are using acceptance test driven development, okay? And uh, designing test cases based on the following user story. Uh, the user story says, as a regular or special user, I want to be able to use my electronic floor card to access specific floor. First of all, I'm not happy about this because uh, uh, this is not a single story. This is supposed to be two different stories. But yeah, that's something most of us go wrong with. We start evaluating the question. Our job is not to do that in the examination. Whatever is given, let's answer that, okay? I do understand. I personally agree that this story should be broken down into two, one for regular user separately, and then independently for special user. We cannot merge such things together, okay? Because these two are two different groups. Here, a special user simply means specially abled users, right? So we may have different expectations from both of them and different needs, so not necessary to merge them. Okay, so let's look at further. So it says, uh, yeah, uh, they are checking the floor access by using electronic floor card. Acceptance criteria are, acceptance criteria one, regular, uh, regular users have access to floors one to three. Acceptance criteria so two says uh, floor four is only accessible to you, special user. Now this word only accessible means only, okay? I had another question where I had a big debate from many of people commenting saying that I don't understand that only what does that mean okay and uh, that's a tricky thing so uh, remember when it is written only only means only okay there's no other meaning for that so it's only accessible to uh, special users that is floor four and uh, that means regular users do not have access to it and acceptance criteria three makes it further clear special users have all the access rights of regular users that means acceptance criteria one is also being applied to special user so in summarization uh, regular users will have access to one to three and special users will have access to one to four now the question here says which test ca test case is most reasonable one to test acceptance criteria three okay so or i don't want to talk about the context okay you know what exactly to do let's move on to the next one here Option A says, uh, check that regular users can access floor one to three. Great, but that's not the question. The question is about which test is most relevant to acceptance criteria three. That is, special users having access to uh, the regular floors as well. That is one to three. So testing it for a regular user uh, for one to three is not a reasonable test. B, check that regular user cannot access floor four. Okay, that's not the check for uh, acceptance criteria three rather it is for two okay because two says uh, floor four is only accessible as special user and if you're checking as a regular user that you cannot access you are trying to fulfill acceptance criteria two not three and c says check that special user can access uh, floor five i don't think anywhere um, the scenario talks about floor five so there's no floor five okay so i i think this option is pretty much unnecessary and can be diverting at points so please be uh, curious about such uh, fancy options. And then we are left with option D. Option D says, uh, check that special users can access floor one, two, three. Exactly true, because this is what the acceptance criteria three is talking about. It says special users follow and have access to all the floors which regular users have. That is one, two, three. So yeah, that pretty much makes sense and make it to the point that the right answer for this particular question is D, <clears throat> D, that is check that uh, a special user can access floors one, two, three is uh, specially meant for acceptance criteria three, that is special users have all the access rights of regular user. See, sometimes that's how a simple question, very straightforward question can be a little complicated as well. The previous one was a very good example of that and this one as well. So make sure that you have complete patience attention to detail and, you know, understanding of every single word what is being discussed here. And that makes you perfect with the examination. 
all right so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them both till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning Thank you.